Hello, my name is David Horvath, and I'm a second-year medical school student at Lincoln Memorial University. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about mid-face fractures. Most of these mid-face fractures are caused by motor vehicle accidents, but some can also be caused by fist fights. As you can imagine, the face is a prime target to fight. One common finding in these fractures, especially the type 2 Lefort fracture, type 3 Lefort fracture, and the tripod fracture, is diplopia, or also known as double vision. Diplopia is caused by the extraocular muscles being snagged down by these sharp fracture lines seen here and over here. When that happens, the muscle cannot move through its full range of motion, therefore you get double vision. Also, this double vision though can be caused by global swelling from the trauma occurring in the tight orbit space. When this occurs, the eye gets restricted in its movement, you cannot look in the direction you want to, you get double vision. CT scan is a diagnostic test of choice for these. That's for several reasons. One, CT offers good bone resolution. You can also see some of that soft tissue swelling from the trauma. And also because you're gonna need facial bone reconstruction for the surgery. There's three different types of Lefort fractures classified by their shape. Type one Lefort fracture is a horizontal shape and it's transmaxillary fracture. You can see here it's Horizontally, transmaxillary. The fractures through the maxilla, transmaxillary. Type 2 Lefort fracture has a pyramidal shape. As you can see here, it kind of looks like a pyramid. Because of the shape of this fracture, you get the finding mid-face mobility, and that's just where the face has more interior, posterior movement, as well as superior, inferior movement. Next, talk about type 3 Lefort fracture. It has a transverse shape. You can see here the fracture is transversely through the orbits. Also you get the vertical fracture through the zygomatic arch. When this occurs you get the finding called craniofacial disassociation. And that's just where the face can move away from the cranium. You could also imagine with this craniofacial disassociation that if the face moves more anteriorly and the eye just stays in the same location right here, then you can get inophthalmos, also known as sunken eye. With a tripod fracture, appropriately named because of the three points of fracture, tripod, you get the maxilla, lateral orbit, and zygomatic arch fractured. Next, we'll talk about nasal ethmoidal fractures, and a common finding in these is CSF leak and meningitis. So the ethmoid bone, situated about right here, contains the cribriform plate. The cribriform plate is this delicate bone that can be easily fractured. When this occurs, CSF from the brain encases the brain, provides nutrients, a little bit of stability. If there's a fracture here, that CSF can leak down and out the nose, causing CSF rhinorrhea. Also, because there's an opening left by the fracture, normal flora in the nose, such as Neisseria meningitis, Streptococcus pneumonia, can come up through that fracture, enter the brain, and cause an infection called meningitis. Next, mandibular fractures. Common finding in these is malocclusion. So malocclusion just means improper bite, malocclusion, improper bite. A normal bite, as you can see here, the maxillary molars, premolars, canines, and incisors fit just over top of the mandibular molars, premolars, canines, and incisors. With a malocclusion, the teeth do not line up like this as they should, and therefore the pa patient presents with an improper closure of the mouth. Commonly things like overbite, underbite, and crossbite. So the treatment for these fractures is ultimately gonna require surgery, but when they present, the first thing you really wanna focus, is on, focus on is monitoring their airway. So with any case of trauma, you want to remember your ABCs, that is airway, breathing, and circulation. 
but really you want to focus on airway. And that's because with a mid-face fracture here, you can get soft tissue swelling in the nasopharynx and oropharynx. And when that occurs, close off the airway and you compromise breathing. So that's the first thing you want to tend to is the airway. Also important to start antibiotics, especially with the nasoethmoidal fracture because of the meningitis risk. As I mentioned, ultimate, require, ultimate repair will require surgical plating and fixation with wires. Last thing I want to mention is nasal bleeding, especially interior nasal bleeding, as this is the most common cause of bleeding. Most of this bleeding, 90% of the cases of nose bleeding, is anterior nasal bleeding that originates from Kesselbach's plexus. Kesselbach's plexus is a nasomosis of arteries that sit on the nasal septum and they're very easily injured. Many times kids will present with this and that's because kids stick foreign bodies up their nose and pick at their nose. It's easily treated by nose compression. You would just compress the cartilaginous tip of your nose for about 10 minutes. If that fails, you would just pack with, with gauze and that's almost always successful.